everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of three on cockroaches. Yep, that's right. It's D News Plus, so we're gonna go there. This is the weirdest insect around. Subscribe so you get all of the episodes that we have this week and all of the episodes we have next week and so on and so forth. You can also check us out over on iTunes. We've got an iTunes link down in the description below us. And then this week, we're gonna talk about cockroaches. What are they? What good are they? What is our relationship as humans with these weird looking insects? And also, fingers crossed, what would a world without cockroaches look like? Would it be better? Would it be worse? What's going on? We're gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of other things as well that I didn't get to mention, but over the next you know, few episodes, we're gonna get super deep into this, so let's kick into it. So, a few of you commented that you wanted a series on cockroaches. This is proof that we read your comments. I'm down there reading them as often as I can. And according to a cockroach expert at the Natural History Museum, George Beccaloni, there are about 4,500 species of cockroach. Isn't that crazy? There are as many as two to three times that number that we haven't even discovered yet. And according to many experts, only around 1% of cockroaches interact with us. So when you think cockroaches, you're really just thinking of a few species. Only one of those species do we consider the pest version of cockroaches. It lives exclusively with human populations and it is a German cockroach called Blatella germanica. That's a sad, a sad little name. But they are insects after all and we don't really love a lot of insects. You know, people, they don't call them bugs for nothing. And uh, just like insects, Cockroaches have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They have three pairs of jointed legs. And a fun fact is cockroaches can actually regrow a lost limb. They just have to molt. And they can postpone molting so the new limb can grow as well. It's pretty crazy. They have a pair of antennae on the front. If you've ever seen a cockroach, you probably can picture that. They're known as antennal flagella, and they're able to move those antennae around, and they use them to smell and kind of feel the world around them. And they, you know, kind of fun. Their antennae can still react to stimuli even if they've been detached from the cockroach itself. Scientists created something called the electroantennagram. It's an antennae attached to an oscilloscope. Then they use that to study cockroach pheromones. Pheromones are chemicals that the cockroach is releasing to tell other cockroaches what's up. So for example, uh, one way that female cockroaches tell male cockroaches that she's ready to mate is she'll go stand on a high surface, usually at night, and emit a sex pheromone that from glands underneath her wings. Then, you know, minutes later, thirsty males show up and they're like, what up, girl? It's pretty awesome. Then they have this exoskeleton, cockroaches. They shed multiple times as they grow throughout their lives. That's part of the molting process. So as they get larger, they need a bigger exoskeleton to live in, so they'll shed it off. Uh, and let's get something straight right up front here. Cockroaches have a head, a thorax, an abdomen. Their brains are in their head. No matter what you hear, their brains are in their brains, in their heads, in their brain boxes. But they can survive for weeks after getting decapitated. We're gonna come back to that, so stick around. More on that later. Cockroaches have been around for a long, long time. Like, way, way longer than you think. Since before the dinosaurs, there were cockroaches. Around 300 to 350 million years ago, in a time called the Carboniferous, cockroaches were thriving. And this was actually known as the age of cockroaches. I would not, if I had a time machine, go back to visit that. No thank you, I'm not really into that. In fact, most of Earth's history, I really wouldn't want to go back and visit. Most, I would say. But modern cockroaches, they haven't actually changed all that much. Except one branch of the cockroach family tree, no pun intended, became termites. And that's right, termites actually evolved directly from cockroaches. So, like a whole jerk part of the family tree over there. They've been known to evolve at crazy fast rates, in fact, cockroaches have. In the 80s, there was this cockroach bait that was being sold, and the idea was they would have this sweet glucose stuff, and it would attract the cockroaches and then kill them with deadly insecticides, you know, like a roach motel. Glucose, it's just a simple sugar. It's basically the thing that cockroaches want when they're hanging around with us, because a lot of our food has glucose in it. By 1993, cockroaches had somehow developed an evolutionary aversion to these roach motels. It took 20 years for humans to figure out how this happened and how they evolved so quickly is still a mystery, 
But in 2013, a study was published in the journal Science where researchers at North Carolina University found that, like humans, cockroaches like sweet and dislike bitter. So we have taste buds on our tongues, but cockroaches have little taste hairs called syncilla, and inside of the syncilla are these things called GRNs, gustatory receptor neurons. So researchers took two groups of cockroaches, the normal glucose-eating group of cockroaches, and then a group they called glucose-averse cockroaches. They gave them six different taste tests. What a day to be a cockroach, you know? Things like uh, glucose were included, and coffee, and fructose, which is the sugar in fruits and honey. It's a little different than the simple glucose sugar. And they found that a normal cockroach, not the averse ones, acted normal. They went for the glucose, they were down, and it stimulated their receptor neurons. But the glucose averse cockroaches, they were not attracted to the glucose. And the research suggests that these averse cockroaches, when they sensed glucose, their sensors were all like, danger, danger, and they stopped eating. Bitter GRNs, the, remember the receptors inside of their version of taste, would suppress the sweet. And then, you know, that would make them not want to eat this glucose. And the reason they evolved that, and remember, roach motels. They evolved it really, really fast. And if that weren't enough for you, there is another way that cockroaches have evolved that is kind of surprising in a lot of different layers, and it's kind of gross. Cockroach milk. It's amazing and awful to think about, right? Cockroaches having milk. Cockroach milk is actually one of the best milks around. So an international team of researchers at the Institute for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine in Bangalore, India, were researching this protein crystal that exists in the midgut of cockroaches. Now, this protein crystal had nutritional value, but they didn't know how much nutritional value it had. They call this crystal cockroach milk. And it turns out once they dug into this little crystal thing, they were shocked because cockroach milk is really frickin' nutritious. It's one of the most nutritious milks on earth. It's a super rich protein, three times more nutritious than buffalo milk. And that was the, the best before this study, by the way. And it's four times more than cow milk. Sanchari Banerjee, a research team member, said, quote, the crystals are like a complete food. They have proteins, fats, and sugars. If you look into the protein sequences, they have all the essential amino acids. It's like the matrix up in there. So cockroach milk, maybe it's a new superfood. Would you try it, you think? God, what a time to be alive. We live in the future. I don't want to eat it. But the thing is, not all cockroaches produce milk. This milk comes from a very specific species that is known to birth live young. A female Pacific beetle cockroach is actually in the form of, the, again, those protein crystals. But we're not gonna like see it on the shelves of the grocery store anytime soon, because we're gonna need to conduct a lot of research to make sure that humans could actually eat it. But if we could, it might be kind of amazing. I mean, maybe not amazing tasting, but amazing for nutrition. Either way, more research is needed. If I had a nickel every time I said that at the end of an episode, I'd have like 100 nickels, maybe more. Guys, let us know down in the comments. One, would you try cockroach milk? Because I, I would try it. Yeah, I would totally try it. Have you ever actually seen a cockroach, though? I've only seen like three in my life. I've seen more on TV than I have in real life. If you've killed one, please tell me about that, too. And if you've eaten one, don't tell me about it. I don't even want to know. The question we have, though, is how will they actually take this cockroach milk and make it into something that we can use? If you want to learn about how they take stuff and make it into other stuff, there's this new app on the App Store called Science Go. It's the science channel, but on your phone or your iPad. You can watch how it's made and see how they make all sorts of stuff. It's super great, actually. I've been watching it all week. You can also watch through the wormhole and I, I mean, I love that show, Morgan Freeman. He's awesome. Anyway, there's a link in the description. Make sure you check out the app and it helps support the show if you do. Tomorrow, we're gonna go talk about humans and cockroaches and how they have this long and storied past. Make sure you subscribe so you get that episode of D News Plus and we'll see you tomorrow.